The 20th Congress of the Communist Party of China is currently taking place, and Dong Sheng will be publishing a series of videos in order to better understand this political event. China is at the center of the world's economy and geopolitics. However, little is known about its internal politics. So what is China's political system? Is it really a dictatorship like the Western media claims? To talk about China's political system, we need to understand two major structures, the state and the party. After the founding of the People's Republic of China on October 1, 1949, the Communist Party of China became the leadership of the government. The party, founded in 1921, already had an established, broad and complex structure, which now began to coexist and converge with the state structure. At the top of the state structure is the presidency, under which are the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, which make up the legislative branch. Below the National People's Congress are the Supreme People's Court and the People's Procuratorate, which represent the judicial branch, the Central Military Commission and the State Council, which is part of the executive branch and includes the Prime Minister and 27 ministries or secretariats. There are no opposition parties in China, so the system of government is not one in which several parties compete for power. But it is not a single party system either. It is a system of multi-party cooperation in which the CPC exercises state power, but in which there are also eight other political parties that participate in the administration of state affairs while accepting the leadership of the CPC. Representatives of the CPC, together with the non-communist parties and other sectors of society, meet every year at the two sessions. This is the time when the annual sessions of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference are held simultaneously. The National People's Congress is the highest organ of state power, but there are also local people's assemblies. These assemblies, as well as the National People's Congress, have four functions. 1. Legislation 2. Appointment and dismissal of officials 3. Decision-making 4. Supervision Did you know that there are direct elections in China? Deputies to county and township people's assemblies are directly elected by the people and deputies for assemblies at the city, provincial or national level are elected by lower level people's assemblies. In 2016 and 2017, for example, more than 900 million voters participated in local elections in what became the largest community elections in the world. This entire large state structure is under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, which also has its own structure. So how do we explain this giant structure of the CPC? Let's start from the bottom. The Communist Party has a party organization department, which has been called the largest human resources department in the world. This department operates with three components, the civil service sector, state-owned enterprises, and social organizations, such as universities or community programs. Any of the CPC's 96.7 million members can become a civil servant. And yes, I said 96.7 million members. If the party was a country, it would be the 16th most populous country in the world. Top university graduates are usually recruited and start at the lowest level, called Ke Yuan. About 7 million civil servants are at this level. Then it goes up to Fu Ke, Ke, Fu Ju, Ju. You get the point. By the time you get to the Central Committee, there are only 360 people. The Party Organization Department reviews the performance of officials once a year. It reviews their peers, superiors, subordinates, investigates their personal conduct, and conducts public opinion surveys. In the end, they promote those who perform the best. Eventually, they can rise from lower levels to Fu Ju or Ju levels, where they can enter the top bureaucracy and administrate districts with millions of people 
or manage multi-million dollar companies. This process takes two to three decades. President Xi Jinping started as village secretary and was elected to the Politburo after having governed regions, including two provinces, totaling 150 million people with a GDP of $1.5 trillion. It's almost like governing Brazil, and it took 30 years. As you can see, the party has a highly meritocratic structure. Of the 360 officials that make up the Central Committee, 25 are elected to the Politburo. The Politburo then elects a standing committee of only seven people, including the President and the Prime Minister. The main decision-making body is the National Party Congress, which meets every five years and is now celebrating its 20th convocation. This Congress is attended by representatives of local and regional administrations, as well as representatives of grassroots organizations. It is the National Congress that elects the members of the Central Committee. But we will talk more about that in the next video. Having said all of this, is China dictatorship or not? A white paper published last year by the government called Democracy That Works highlights the whole process people's democracy as a core concept. The document also says the following, open quote, whole process people's democracy integrates two major democratic models, electoral democracy and consultative democracy, and it is rooted in this vast land nourished by the culture and traditions of the Chinese civilization and draws on the achievements of human civilization, end quote. So the Chinese people may not cast their ballots for their president every few years, as in the Western-style democracy, but nor do the Chinese people live in a dictatorship. From the grassroots level, where there are direct elections, to the highest levels that incorporate consultations with all sectors of society, China has created a new system to represent and respond to the people. Western democracy is not the only path, and indeed, China has successfully created its own system and adapted it to the reality of the Chinese people. It is neither perfect nor a model to impose on other countries. But it is a demonstration that alternatives exist and that they can be successful.